my name is Simone, and I am the beginning of the end. I'm the bringer of the robot apocalypse, maybe. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the importance of building useless things, or at least why it has been very important to me. And I'm going to start with a story from when I was eight years old, and I was this really happy, cheerful kid. <laughs> And I had an idea that I wanted to build a robot, but I had no idea how to actually make it. So the way I went on about it was that I got a block of wood, and I drilled a hole through it, I put a stick through the hole, and the way this was a robot, brace yourselves, the way this was a robot was that if you wiggled one end of the stick, the other end would move too. <laughs> and I was like, it's alive! <laughs> And I know what you're all thinking. You're like, God damn, this girl's a genius. <laughs> Somebody should throw a ton of money at her. And I totally agree. <laughs> but looking back at this robot as a somewhat grown up, I realized that it's pretty terrible. I don't think it even qualifies as a robot. But that, I realized, is one of the biggest differences of building things as a kid and building things as a grown up that when you're building things as a kid, nobody really expects you to build useful things. And most of all, I didn't expect it of myself. So eight-year-old Simone was like, fuck that shit, I love this robot. So a few things have changed since I was eight years old. I'm a lot happier nowadays. Uh, <laughs> but one thing that hasn't changed is that I still build a lot of things. This is an applause machine that I made so you can clap your hands without having to use your hands. And <laughs> yeah, you're going old school. You're like, no, we're sticking to normal hands. And this invention is great if you have hands but you don't want to use them. The next one I'm going to show you is great if you have hands but you don't want to have them anymore. Because I made a chopping machine. As a bonus, this is the perfect response if anyone ever sends you dick pics you don't want. <laughs> and by some weird internet miracle, this has become what I do for a living. I have, for the last year, been a full-time inventor of shitty robots. My YouTube channel is my main platform, and people have started calling me the queen of shitty robots. Yeah, it's, it's a title. I wear it with pride. I love it, yeah. And that brings me to the first reason as to why it's important to build useless things. Because if you find the things you do interesting, there are probably other people who do too. And interesting doesn't necessarily mean useful. For me, it really didn't. And, and this was how I got started. I only built these things because I thought it was fun. And I started publishing them online, and the internet is a magical place because somehow people found these shitty robots that I was putting out, and they started sharing them, and then more people started sharing them, and then I started getting more comments that I could keep up with, and marriage proposals, and people started calling me the Kardashian of tech because all these different magazines started writing about it. And then all these TV shows started showing my clips. Here's a Japanese TV show that showed my breakfast robot. And last week, I was on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. <laughs> and once again, this is what it all comes back to. If you find the things you do interesting, there are probably other people who do too. Because I never planned for this to happen. I don't think I could have planned for this to happen because I didn't know that this could happen. Uh, all I did was do things that I found interesting and it turned out that other people liked them too. 
And I understand that my case might be a little bit extreme, but I think it stays true even on a much smaller scale, because even if there's only one other person who likes what you do, I can't think of a better way to connect with another person. So a lot of people think that I'm an engineer, but I'm not. I'm self-taught in both hardware and software, and about two years ago, I had never held a soldering iron. And a lot of people ask me what the best way to teach yourself about electronics is, like what books to read, what websites to visit. And first of all, I'm like, do you realize who you're asking for advice? <laughs> <laughs> but but I, it got me thinking of like, how did I actually teach me, teach myself the things that I know today? And what I realized was that there was not a single point during these two years that I sat down with a book being like, I'm gonna learn about transistors. Instead, it was very idea driven for me. And what I like to talk about is ideas first and tools later. Because it was always around this idea that I felt really strongly for. I had some idea of a project that I wanted to build, and then there were just all these things I had to learn along the way. And to me, this really makes sense, and it's turned out to be a very effective way for me to learn, but if you think about how a lot of the education system is, it's the other way around. You first learn the tools, and then maybe you get to apply them on ideas. And Sometimes you might not even get to, idea, to the ideas. Um, but, but obviously, learning by doing is a really effective way to learn. And I mean, it, I would argue that for building, it's probably the most effective way. I mean, maybe not if you're a doctor. Because <laughs> you're like, OK, patient, we, let's just try <laughs> cutting a little bit here. It doesn't look like a very important part. Let's see what happens if we take it out. Yeah, if you're a doctor, then learning by doing not, might not be a great idea. But if you're building things, I would argue that it's the best one. And as a bonus, you learn a lot of stuff around it. You get a lot of learnings that you never expect. So for example, that putting your hair next to motors is a really bad idea. Just rest assured, it hurt my scalp a lot less than it hurt my dignity. <laughs> so my final reason why it's important to build useless things is because your ideas might be smarter than you. And what I mean with that is that good ideas might turn out to be bad, and bad ideas might turn out to be good, but you won't know unless you actually build them. So it's kind of like that time when I thought it would be a good idea to have a drone cut hair. So I put a pair of automated scissors on a drone. <laughs> Obviously a pretty bad idea with a pretty terrifying outcome. Another example is I try to have a robot arm make me a sandwich. <laughs> I actually made this with my friend Fiona, who I think is in the audience somewhere. What? No, maybe she's not. Oh, she's over there. Yeah, hey, Fiona. She was puppeteering the robot arm behind the, behind the scene or behind the camera. Uh, but a more serious example of when your ideas might be smarter than you, and I love using the word serious whenever I talk about the toothbrush helmet. A more serious example is the toothbrush helmet. This was the first shitty robot I built, and I posted it online, it uh, went viral, and what really surprised me about it was that a lot of people wrote me, and they were like, hey Simone, I understand that this is just a gimmick and something you only built for fun, but do you realize that this would actually be really useful for people with mobility issues? And that just blew my mind, because here I had been, I'd built something only because why not, and because I thought it was fun, and then other people could find tiny pieces of useful things and might actually be able to help people. And a lot of people expect me to kind of accidentally build something useful 
and maybe one day I will. But I realized that in some way I already have because I accidentally created this job for myself. And, and this job and being the queen of shitty robots and getting to build ridiculous things and meet cool people is definitely my best invention so far. And to me, that is the real beauty of creating things, be it useless things or useful things, because you never really know where it's gonna take you. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. I'm at Simon Yach on all social media. And go home and build some useless things, because useful things might come out of it. Thank you. Yeah.